what is a manifold. Um, <clears throat> so let me just begin by giving some examples. So <clears throat> let's look at some curves in the plane in R2. Curves in R2. This is the first class of examples. First one is just a open line segment. Second one is so this is a open line. Second one is a circle. Third one is two circles. Fourth one is a square. This is a, in this row there are a bunch of examples. In the second row, we will look at uh, intersection, two lines intersecting at a point. Two circles touching at a point and a circle with a line segment attached to it. So <clears throat> if we compare the examples in the first row and the second row, there are various differences of course, but one difference which is relevant for us is the following. If we take any point here, let's say we look at the first uh, series of examples, if we take any point uh, in this case, of course, the a point is contained in a line segment. But even in this case, let's say we take some point on the circle. If you take a small enough portion of a circle, it's going to look like this. An arc, a circular arc. And the point is that this circular arc can be deformed to a line segment. What exactly do I mean by deformation? So this circular arc can be mapped in a one to one onto continuous way to a line segment. And in fact here, uh, not only can this be mapped like this, the inverse mapping will also be continuous. That's also important. And the same is true for all these. The fact that in this uh, picture, our figure consists of two circles is not that important. If you stay close enough to a point, the second circle doesn't even enter into the picture. So, we'll again get a circular arc, which the, this thing can be done. And similarly for the square, it might look as if this is a problematic point, but here, small enough portion of that is going to look like this, which can be easily mapped to this in a one to one continuous fashion. On the other hand, that property does not hold in the second row. Let's say we take this point of intersection here. However small a neighborhood I take of this point, what I get will continue to look like this maybe smaller and smaller uh, this cross signs and it's easy to check that there is no continuous one to one mapping with continuous inverse 
onto a line segment. It's an exercise, easy exercise to check this. <coughs> so this mapping does not exist. So this already shows what we are looking for, namely the property that if you stay close enough to a point, a neighborhood should look like, uh, in this case, should look like a line segment. But let's go one dimension higher. So the second series of examples is surfaces in R3, just like curves in R2, uh, we have surfaces in R3. And here again, I'll draw a series of pictures. The first one is just the two dimensional sphere. It's, well, it just looks like what I drew earlier, but it's set of all x, y, z. So that's x squared plus y squared plus x squared equal to 1. Then, the second example is an ellipsoid. The third one is a torus which one can think of as the surface of revolution you start with the xyz plane take a circle in this plane vertical plane and just rotate it about the vertical axis you will get this picture fourth one is a cube And in my second row, I'll draw something similar to what I drew earlier. I'll take two spheres touching at a point. And I'll take a sphere with a line attached to it. Again, the one difference between this series of examples pictures and this series is that if I take any point in any one of these and if I take a small enough neighborhood what I'll get is a something which will be which can be mapped in a continuous one one fashion to a open disk so the open disk is <coughs> well the open disk This is the analog of the open interval in, uh, in the previous series of examples. Open disk, set of all x, x, y, that square plus y square, strictly less than 1. This is in R2. So a piece of this looks like the open disk in R2, in any one of these. Here at the vertex, a piece of this is going to look like and well, uh, I can't quite draw it here, something like this. But if I flatten this, then it can be done in a continuous one to one fashion, I can get the disk. On the other hand, here again one encounters a problem. So, if I, if I take this point, the point of contact, however small a neighborhood I take, I will get a piece is going to look like this. This is a portion of this sphere and the second one is a portion of this sphere. And again, one can check that this cannot be mapped in a one-to-one -one continuous fashion to an open disk. Same thing here. If I take this point, any small neighborhood is going to look like a portion of a sphere to which a line is attached, maybe a smaller line. And this cannot be mapped 
again. Do this. So the property, <coughs> what I have been trying to highlight is the the defining property of a topological manifold. So now I'll give a formal definition. A topological ah here let n be a positive integer. A topological n manifold, a topological space. which is <coughs> locally homeomorphic to a n ball. This is the abstract definition. Let me just explain what these terms mean. So the starting point, well, strictly speaking, this is not quite enough, just saying a topological space. There are two technical conditions one has to add, um, <clears throat> but uh, that's not so important right now. So a topological space is essentially a set endowed with a, a where you can talk about open sets and closed sets. That's pretty much the definition of a topological space. And once you have notion of an open set and a closed set, you can talk about continuous functions, <coughs> which leads me to this locally homeomorphic. So what does locally homeomorphic mean? So this is the point which I, we were looking at earlier. Every point in the space, so let's give it a name, M in the space M, is contained in a neighborhood, in, contained in an open set, U. which <coughs> such that there is a continuous one to one locally homeomorphic to uh, the n ball. This n ball is usually denoted by B n. Continuous one to one with continuous inverse. Actually, it's a deep theorem that uh, one need not put this condition. Continuous one to one is good enough. There's a continuous one to one, uh, <coughs> continuous one to one map, one to one onto, onto map F from U to BN. In the one and two dimensional cases, this Bn was just an interval in one case, a disk in another case. So <coughs> every point is contained in an open set, so that there is a content. It's the exact analog of whatever I was doing earlier. And this such a map, continuous one to one with a continuous inverse, is called a homeomorphism. That's why we put this. And this n is called the dimension of the manifold.
again this is it's also another deep fact that this n is well defined in other words which is locally homeomorphic to a n ball is what i've written here but some ambiguity might arise if the same open set is also homeomorphic to a m ball for different m m not equal to n even though it looks kind of trivial but it uh, it's not easy to prove uh, well it requires some more uh, stuff to prove that the same thing the cannot be homeomorphic to the n ball and the m ball so this is uh, well this is the formal definition now i mentioned two technical things which are actually one sees uh, technical remark i one doesn't just consider a topological space one considers m to be the space to be hausdorff and second countable it turns out that just this locally homeomorphic is not enough to guarantee these two these two have to be added separately so that is a manifold a topological manifold 